Hello amazing student, we're going to be going over lesson 3.2.2, how can rectangles help me multiply? Exploring more of these area models. We're also going to be going over the quiz 3.5 review which goes over various standards that are on an upcoming quiz, um, especially 3C which is practice for lesson 3.2.2. So let's begin. Our first task is to remember what the various types of tiles are. Um, if it's a square tile like this, it's likely going to be an x squared tile or a y squared tile. The y squared tile is typically bigger than the x squared tile. There's also an x tile, which is the same dimension as x squared but it's not as it's not a square it's a rectangle and there's also a y square uh, sorry a y tile which is the same dimension as y squared but it's a rectangle um, not a square and finally we also have a one by one tile which is a one tile and a x y tile so remember if the name of the shape is its area, that means the area of that rectangle is simply length times width, length times width. It's very important to know the dimensions of those sides, so label those really quickly. If it's x times x, that's x squared. If it's y times y, that's y squared. And if it's x times y, or y is the longer side. We get x, y. x times y. That's the name of the tile. That's the name of the tile. Um, and don't ever really second guess things. If you notice, I said, I, I made a little note to myself. If you see a really small edge or side, a really small side, don't overthink it. The length of that side is likely just one. So, this one, of course, is y times 1. 1 times y, or y times 1, is just y. 1 times 1 is 1. And of course, what's the x tile? A really small side is 1 by x. 1 times x is x. So with that being said, let's go over 385 and continue uh, practicing into our quiz preparing for a quiz. Okay, 385. It says write the area of the following rectangle as the product of the dimensions equivalent to the area as the sum of its parts. Remember to re combine like terms when possible. Okay, essentially what this means is we want the length times the width. That's going to be called the product the area product. And then over here is the area sum. Now make a note, what does the word product mean? Product means multiply. Well the sum means Add. That's right. So there's two types of areas. It's where we do the length times the width, or length times width. They're interchangeable. And then there's the area where we can add up all the inside to get our area. So let's begin. Um, let's start by labeling all the tiles. So label all those tiles, please. All the x squared tiles, label them x squared. And I want you to also label all the smaller tiles. If this is x squared, this is just x. So just put a lot of x's. There's a bunch of x's. I wonder how many x's there are. Go ahead and label all of those tiles. And for the one tiles, I like to treat it like a dice. 
I'll just put a little dot on it. So for those one tiles, just go ahead and put a dot on them, as if you're counting them. All right, if you've done that, fantastic. I want you to also label the sides now. Label the sides on the left. I said X, X, one, one, one. And you can do it on the top or the bottom portion of the rectangle. I'm gonna go ahead and label it on the bottom here. These are also one, 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 one. Remember I said, if you see a really small side, don't overthink it. Those sides are very likely going to be one. Now, it's important to note that opposite sides are literally the same. So if you notice that this side is x, then this side also has to be x. But you don't need to label them. Just label one length or width and label the other length or width. Now for this first one, I'm going to go ahead and combine like terms here. This is going to be 2x, write that down, and this is going to be 3, just to combine them, because we're trying to find out the length of that. Now what would this one be? Yeah, 4x plus what? plus five. Good, so th this is as simple as it gets when it comes to the length and the width. We can call, I guess the longer one we can call the length, it doesn't matter, but um, the length of this shape is gonna be four x plus five, and the width of this shape is going to be, let's write the x first, yeah, two x plus three. Now, when you multiply the length and the width, you're going to get all these area pieces. So we have to add up all the area pieces. And that's going to be all these right here. So it's going to be 8x squared. There's 8x squared tiles. Now my question for you is how many x's are there? Count them very carefully. How many x's are there? There's 10 here, and there's 12 here. So there's 22 x's, binding them all together, 22 x's. And then all of the one tiles, how many one tiles are there? How many of those singular one tiles are there? Yes, so say plus 15. And that's the area sum where you just add them all together. All right, now number 386. Now examine the following diagram. How is this similar to the algebra tiles from the previous problem? How is it different? Talk with your teammates and write down all of your observations. So the idea here is if you notice 2x plus 3 and 2x plus 3, you're, you're seeing things, you're seeing things, you're seeing good things. If you're noticing 4x plus 5, that was the width or the length of that shape. And what are all these? 8x squared is all these 8x squared tiles. 12x is how many is over here? 12. 10x is how many over here? We can even highlight it if we wanted to. And the 15, where'd that come from? Yeah, that, that's 15 one tiles. one tiles. So there's a lot of similarities and that's why we're going to be going a little bit away from algebra tiles and going into more of these things called what? An area model. So which one do you like better? Algebra tiles where each of them is drawn separately or an area model? where it's just in the box. All it has is how many of the x squared tiles you have. 
So if you notice this one, this one quite literally means there are eight what of, of what tile? There are eight x squared tiles. All right, number 387. This is going to be very good practice for us when it comes to using area models. So remember, we're going to do the area product, length times width, and we're going to do the area sum, where you just add up all the inside together. So uh, write that down, area product and area sum. If you see parentheses, that's going to mean it's going to be a product. It's going to be multiplying length times width. Okay. So if you if you notice any parentheses here, product means parentheses. There's going to be parentheses involved um, most of the time. All right. So here we go. The product. This is how easy it gets. The product is length times width. So x plus five times. 2x plus 3. Now our job is to just multiply now. We have to be able to multiply each of these boxes in here. So we have to multiply 2x times 5. You see where they cross? That's where you have to multiply. 2x times 5. What is 5 times 2x? 10x. You see where these two cross? 5 times 3. What's 5 times 3? 15. What about this one? x times 2x. Well, x times x is x squared, so 2x squared. All right, always make a note of that if you want to. x times x is 8, is x squared. And finally, 3 times x, where these two cross. 3 times x is 3x. So, the idea with area models is the product is very obvious, right? The product is simply going to be length times width. It's what's written on the outside. And then the sum is when you have to add them all together. So you have to combine like terms, OK? So the most common thing you're going to notice in area models is there is usually like terms that you can add together. Remember like terms is like how many X's? How many dollars? So the only like terms that we have here is going to be 2x squared plus 3x plus 10x plus 15. The only like terms are these two. So if you add them together Combining like terms, what would you get? 2x squared plus 13x plus 15. And that's your area sum. You can, at this point, pretty much box your answer. Because if you multiply length times width, you will get what's in the area as a sum. All right, let's move on to letter C. Letter C might be a little bit more difficult because we're dealing with X's and Y's. It's just important to remember to multiply correctly. So remember where they cross. 4Y times 6Y, that's going to be 24. 4 times 6 is 24. What's Y times Y? Y squared. All right, these two, where do they cross? Negative 7 times 6y. That's going to be negative 42y because 7 times 6 is 42. It's negative and there's a y. All right, let's just do the bottom row. You can do it in any order you want. Where do these two cross? They cross right there. So 4y times x. It's going to be just put it in alphabetical order. 4y times x is 4xy. Negative 7 times x, it's pretty easy. Negative 7x. Let's multiply the top right here. 
before they cross. Negative 7 times 1. Negative 7. And last one here. Where do they cross? 4y times 1 is just simply 4y. All right, now our task is to combine like terms. Remember how I told you, usually there is some sort of like terms here. So the like terms in this situation is on the diagonal. Those two, if you add them together, you will get like terms. So I'm going to put them in order of highest power here. I'm going to write the 24y squared first. Let's put a check mark. Plus 4xy. Check mark. I'll write the x next, minus 7x. Then the y's. If it's negative, it's minus. If it's positive, it's plus. And let's not forget any single one of our boxes. The last box is the negative 7. So where are our like terms? Our like terms were only the y's. Those were the only ones we can add together. So let's see um, what we get. 24y squared plus 4xy minus 7x. None of those can be added together. What is negative 42 plus 4? It's negative 38. So adding those together, the like terms, gives us, neg gives us negative 38y. And finally, minus 7. So that's our area sum. We cannot add anything else together, so that's going to be the area sum. 24, rewrite it right here, please. 24y squared plus 4xy minus 7x minus 38y. Minus 7. This is obviously a really ridiculous problem, but that is the sum. You can do AS for short. Okay, what's the product? What's the area product? AP for short. That's going to be length times width, so we just have to say what the length is. The length is negative 7 plus 4y, or just say 4y minus 7. And the width, remember they're interchangeable. You can write it in any order, length times width or length times width. The width will be, if you want to write it in alphabetical order, you can, x plus 6y plus 1 or 6y plus x plus 1. You can draw an arrow to show where these numbers came from if you're looking back at your notes. OK, that would be the answer. Now let's go on to some easier ones. I know that, that last one was ridiculous, so let's just practice some, some that are a little bit less complicated. So here we go. Um, what is the area product? So the area product is 3 times y plus 5. And what's the area sum? Let's multiply. 3 times y, 3y, and 3 times 5, 15. And this should look familiar to you. This really is just the distributive property. When you multiply those two things, you're going to get 3y plus 15. All right, next problem. x times 2x. Do this super carefully. What's x times 2x? What's x times x? x squared. So x times 2x is 2x squared. So the product is x times 2x, length times width. And the area sum is just what's inside. So the area sum will be 2x squared. All right, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and review for the quiz. So 
So for this review, I'm going to do this fairly quickly. You're going to be able to have access to this video and rewatch them. But I'm going to do these pretty quickly, so please follow along. This first standard, we already did this. Um, we already assessed it before, so now it's time to just review. We're going to reassess it. So um, This one says for number one, um, write the equation of a line, y equals mx plus b, having a slope of 4 and a y-intercept of 0, negative 8. So we know m is the slope, b is the y-intercept. So good news. This one already gives us the answer. The slope is 4. The number in front of x has to be 4. And the y-intercept has to be 0, comma, negative 8, which in this case you just write minus 8 and you're done. Number 2. Is negative 3, comma, 10 on the line 2x minus 4? I'll plug these numbers into my equation. I'll substitute them in. x goes here, y goes here. So let's see if it is a solution. So 10 equals 2 times x. x is negative 3 minus 4. OK, if it's true, if these are equal, then it's on the line. If it's not equal, then it's not on the line. So we get 10 equals negative 6 minus 4. Is, neg is 10 equal to negative 6 minus 4? Well, what's negative 6 minus 4? Negative 10. Is 10 equal to negative 10? No. Not on the line. Why? Because you have to show your work, right? The reason why is they're not equal. Number 3. Write the equation of a line with a slope of negative 5. Okay. And going through the point 2, comma 7. Well, 2, two comma 7 is just x, comma y, so I will go ahead and use my information to fill out the rest of my equation. All I need is b. That's the only thing I'm missing. So now I'm going to go ahead and substitute x as 2 and y as 7. So that's going to give us 7 equals negative 5 times 2 plus b. Wonderful. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10. b, we still don't know what b is, but we're about to find out. If I can solve for b, what's the opposite of sad? Happy. What's the opposite of multiply? Divide. So if I want to get b by itself, I'd have to do the opposite of subtract 10, which is add 10. That gives us b equals 7 plus 10, 17. I'm going to circle that answer. I'm not done with the problem, because my idea here is to write the equation. So since I already had the equation written here, negative 5x plus b, but b is 17, y equals mx plus b is right there. You can double check your work, see if you did it correctly, but I know that we did. OK, for this next one, I'm only given two points. So I'm going to use the formula for slope. Change in y over change in x. Okay, in this case, I'm going to go right to left negative 6 minus 6, the y values. And the x values is negative 1 minus 3. So carefully solving for slope, we're going to get negative 6 minus 6 and negative 1 minus 3. We get this. What is negative 12 divided by negative 4? It's 3. 
we get our slope. Now I'm going to use this formula, mx plus b, and I'm going to ask myself, how much information do I know? I only know the slope, so I know m is 3, and I don't know what b is. Now if you compare this problem, number 4, to number 3, what's the difference? Number 3, they gave us the slope and a point. Number 4, we had to find the slope, and we're given two points. So number four is the same as number three. You just had to find the slope first. Now, which of these two coordinates would you like? You can choose either one. So would you rather choose three comma six or negative one comma negative six? Most people will agree they would like the first one. So if you use this coordinate, you will get B. If you use this coordinate, you will also be able to get B. But let's do it without any mistakes. So let's use the positive numbers. So 3 goes in there for x, and 6 goes in for y. We get 6 equals 3 times 3 plus b. Three times three is nine. Nine plus b. What's the opposite of happy? Sad. What's the opposite of subtract? Add. What's the opposite of add? Subtract. So you're going to subtract nine, and that's going to give us six minus nine is negative three. I'll circle that because that's not my answer. My final answer is y equals mx plus b. Our slope was 3, our y-intercept was negative 3, which we solved for here and here. So that would be the answer. Okay, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next standard, standard F2. F2 is the coordinates. It's all about coordinates. So we're going to go ahead and review it. So F2, foundational. This is actually, uh, I believe this is basic. Sorry, uh, this is a uh, standard F2 is foundational, meaning it's one of, the, one of the standards that's part of the foundational standards that are um, worth less, but we do have to get really good at them. So let's begin. So for number, I guess the first problem, what's the x-intercept? There's only one of them. Write it as a coordinate. This whole standard is all about coordinates, okay? Now the y-intercepts, what are the y-intercepts? There's two y-intercepts. Remember this is the x-axis, that's the y, so we have 0, 2, which is right up there. And we also have 0, negative 2, which is right there. Okay, next up, we have to graph five coordinates. It says draw and scale the axes, plotting the following points as they fit on the graph. Okay, so for this one, I'm just going to take a look at the numbers first of all. It looks like we have some pretty big numbers. We might be able to count by two, or maybe not. It's a really big number. So I'm going to put my coordinates plane, since I do notice we have some positives, some negatives. I'm going to put my coordinates in the middle. Okay, it does say label the origin D. I can do that one right away. The origin is point D, com zero comma zero. That's the origin. Um, now let's decide what we want to count by. I'm going to label my axes X and Y. What do I want to count by? Let's count by, let's see if we count by four. What would it do? 4, 8, 12, 16, 18, 20, 2. Okay, too small. If we count by 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. It's too big. Um, 2 is too too low of a number. It's not going to fit. So I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and in this case count by 10s. If we had a bigger graph, we probably could count by something smaller, um, smaller numbers. But let's just go ahead and label. 
a few numbers on our graph. Oh, by the way, you could actually count by different numbers on the x-axis and y-axis. Um, but for this case, let's just keep it simple and, and see where these points would be. So letter A, negative 18 comma 10. Negative 18 comma 10 would be right here, around right there. Label that point A. All right, let's see where point B would be. Point B would be negative 4, negative 16. So go left 4 and negative 16 would be around, around right there. That's point B. Point C would be 2 comma 6. 2 comma 6 would be very close to point D. So I can put an arrow there. That is point C right there. Very close to point D, unfortunately. And point E, coordinate E, is 20 comma negative 40. So point E would be right there. Okay, the last problem is just going to be, can we identify all our coordinates properly from a coordinate plane? So I know these, these ones are written a little small on the test. It will be written a lot bigger. So W, let's find W. W is negative 3 comma 1. S, let's see if we can find S. S is right there. What's the coordinate for that one? 2 comma 6. All right, let's find a 4 negative 2 and find out what letter that would be. 4 negative 2. That would be T, point T. And 0, negative 5 would be right there. Left 0, down 5 would be point L. And that's standard F2. Let's move on to standard 3C. So 3C, that's the one we've been practicing with area models. Now, my only um, suggestion for this one is just always double check what's x times x. x times x should be x squared. The first one's already pretty much done for you. The second one, you do need to fill out the area sum, but the, the product is already written for you. The third one is going to be missing some pieces. You have to figure out what would multiply to give us 6x. And the fourth one is just going to be algebra tiles. So I'm going to give you a couple of moments to try some of these out, and then we're going to go over some of the answers. All right, so for this first one, we know the area product is length times width, which is already given to us. Product means parentheses, so 2x minus 3 times x plus 2. Now the area sum, remember the area sum is when you combine like terms. Like terms are usually on the diagonal of each other. So it's going to be 2x squared. 4x minus 3x is just 1x. So we'll write down x plus x and minus 6 adding all four of those sides. And that will be the answer. Okay, so remember, sum means add. Product means multiply. For this next one, we have to fill out the missing pieces, but let's just write down the product first. If you didn't do so already, the product is asking to be written on the right side. So you can say negative 4 plus x, or you can say x minus 4. So the product would be x minus 4 times 5x plus 2. Question, does the order of this matter? Can you switch a times b? No, you can. a times b is the same as b times a. So you can switch the order of the parentheses. It does not matter. You can switch it 
and have a happy face. It does not matter. You can switch those two. It will be still correct. So for this one, I'm going to get 5x times negative 4. Let's multiply those two. Negative 20x. 5x times x. 5x squared. x times 2. 2x. And negative 4 times 2, where those two cross would be negative 8. Now carefully remember, on the diagonal, there's usually something you can add together. So those two I'll add together. Negative 20x plus 2x. What is negative 20 plus 2? It's negative 18. So we're going to get our answer of, let's write the biggest number first, the biggest power, 5x squared minus 18x minus 8. And that would be your answer. OK, let's move down to the area model problem here. Let's label them. It's already labeled for us, thankfully. All the x tiles are labeled, all the x squareds. What's left? Just our 1 tiles, which I said you can label like a dice. And just put a dot there. Uh, label the sides. What is it? x times x, x squared. x times 1. Remember the lengths. I wrote down a little reminder to myself. If you see a really small side, don't hesitate. Don't overthink it. It's likely just 1. So this length would be 1 as well. So our answer would be, let's just combine them. This, this length would be x plus 2. This length would be x plus 1. So the product would be x plus 2 times x plus 1. Remember, you could switch them. It does not matter. You can write down x plus 1 times x plus 2. It's the same thing. I know the area sum would be when you add up all the inside. So that would be x squared plus, let's combine the like terms. How many x's do we have? In this case, we have 3. <laughs> Maybe not two and a half, but three. And we have two one tiles, so that would be plus two. And that would be our answer. Now let's go to the toughest problem on this page. It's going to be this one right here. This one's where we have missing pieces. What times two is six x? Three x. So you ha it's like a puzzle. You have to fill out the missing pieces. What times 2 is 6x? The only thing that it could be is 3, 3x. Okay, This piece would be this times this, 2 times 4y. 2 times 4y is 8y. Now, this piece right here, remember these two pieces multiply together to get this. So what times 4 is negative 24? You can divide if you want to as well. Is it 7? What's 7 times 4? 28. What's 4 times 4? 16. The only number that would work is 6. But it's negative. So it has to be negative 6. Now to, let's double check. Does that multiply correctly? Negative 6 times 4y. Negative 24y. Oh, but there's an also an x there. That means there has to be an x here as well. Now double check, does this multiply? Negative 6x times 4y is negative 24xy. It does work out, so that would be our answer, our correct answer. Now finally, let's multiply these two right here and write the area sum and product. Negative 6x times 3x. What's negative 6 times 3? What's negative 6 times 3? It's negative 18. Negative 18. And then we have x and x. What's x times x? You got it. x squared. OK, now look on the diagonals. Do we have anything that looks like they can be like terms? There are no like terms. So the sum, let's do the sum first, where we add all four of these together. Negative 18x squared minus 24xy plus 6x plus 
8y. This one is ridiculous. That one's ridiculous. Check that out. I'll zoom in on this one. Make sure you have this one in. This one's pretty crazy because the variables are wild. And now the product. Length times width. The product is length times width. How long is this length right here? Negative 6x plus 2. Use parentheses. Product means parentheses. And then the width. How long is that side? 3x plus 4y. And that will be your answer. Now I hope that this video is helpful. I, I do want to recommend you rewatch parts until you understand it. And look back at any notes so that they're helpful for you. Um, and good luck on your quiz. That's where I'm going to stop the video.